Dearest viewer, the time has come to decorate for the upcoming event in our social calendar, Easter. Tonight we shall discover whether we will succeed in impressing the ton with the most beautiful Easter table. And for this exquisite occasion, the lady of Matchbook's Manor, Kirsten, went to the Modiste to get the latest Parisian garment. Hello everyone and welcome to today's video and I just finished watching Bridgerton season 2 and we just love the Regency period. We are always so inspired by the interior, the houses, the clothes, the colours and I must admit I always pay close attention to the china they use and also the cakes and because Easter is around the corner I thought it would be such a wonderful idea to decorate a Bridgerton inspired Easter table. I have this lovely book which is called the unofficial Bridgerton book of afternoon tea and I chose two cake recipes that will look lovely on an Easter table and yeah, I will make the cakes first and then show you how I decorate for Easter. Before I make the cakes, I'm going to colour some eggs first and you might be surprised, but it's actually not that easy to find white eggs here in the UK. So we got some dog eggs and I'm going to use the colours blue, pink and green. I think it, it's just always so nice on an Easter table. Next up are the heart chew bonds inspired by Penelope Featherington and I tried them a couple of days ago and I must say I didn't really like their shoe pastry and I talked to my mom and she was so kind and sent me her recipe that she's been using for decades and yeah I'm going to work with that. Let's make the shoe pastry and I'm going to make it gluten free. You need butter, all-purpose gluten-free flour, salt and water. The heart shoe bonds definitely need a little bit of practice so mine aren't perfect but I think the more often I make them the more beautiful they will look. On the other hand once the glazing is on top they will look beautiful no matter what. But now let's continue with the marshmallow filling because that's quite easy. These are the hearts that should work. So <laughs> strange shapes but it will do. So for the filling you need marshmallow fluff, icing sugar, butter and a little bit of milk. Whisk the ingredients together until you have a smooth thick frosting. Using a piping bag, pipe small blobs of filling onto the hearts following their shape. For the sugar glaze you need icing sugar, vanilla bean extract, of course pink food colouring and most importantly some sugar flowers to decorate. This is the lovely sugar glaze and now take your hearts and just dip them into the icing. While the hearts are still wet decorate with the sugar flowers and let them dry. The next cakes I'm going to make are called lemon and lavender cakes which are inspired by Marina Thompson and they look like this and I so fell in love with, with the three layers and the purple colour. The only thing 
I won't be able to make is the lavender decoration because lavender is not in season yet but still I think they are the perfect addition and these are the ingredients for the lemon and lavender cakes but as I mentioned earlier you will find everything down below in the info box I mix sugar and soft butter and we'll whisk that now until light and creamy I had to switch on the light because it's raining now. Well, what I did, because the cake will have three layers and three different colors, I divided the mixture into small bowls so that I roughly get the same amount. And these are the three cakes. One, two, and this is the third one. What I'm doing now is I'm using a cutter to cut out circles, three each. Now let's see how this one turned out. Excited to see the colour. Yeah, looks nice. And finally, this one. Let's see. Okay, this could have been a little bit different, but it's fine. drizzled with lemon juice and now I'm going to make the buttercream and for the buttercream you need icing sugar a little bit of lemon juice cream cheese and a little bit of butter This is the result so far, and of course they're not perfect. I'm not a baker, but I think they will taste so nice, and yeah, it's homemade. Now, the last step is I will sprinkle the top of each cake with some icing sugar, and then they are ready. It's a bit of work to prepare all the cakes, I'm not going to lie, but I think it's really worth it. Now let's move on to the fun part, to the most enjoyable part, which is decorating for Easter. And I thought I would start by showing you what would look great on a Bridgerton-inspired Easter table. For those of you who just joined our channel, we are still redecorating our Victorian terraced house and still haven't finished our dining room but luckily we have such a lovely corner here in our kitchen and this is where we have our meals. I'm starting with this beautiful tablecloth and the funny thing is it's from Mrs Alice and we get so many table linen from her and this here is actually inspired by the Regency room in her wonderful house so it's perfect for a Bridgerton-inspired Easter. Then, of course, flowers. And these here have a pastel colour and are so beautiful and I think a perfect match. Then, of course, candles and we always have these candles here at home because we really adore them and they are pastel colored as well and these candlesticks we've had them forever we got them as a wedding present so they are very special and as you can see 
classic and timeless. And I think a must-have is silver. I always see it in Bridgerton and it's so beautiful. So we have all kinds of different things here on the table and it makes it look so elegant. Beautiful napkins, of course, and wonderful china. And this here is Burley pottery that we've been collecting for some years and we really love it. It's beautiful crystal ware. Now, this is the crystal ware that is actually used in Downton Abbey and it's, it's absolutely divine. And we also bought some lovely Easter chocolates and little cakes that will finish off the table. And I think these pastel chocolate eggs are just perfect. And now I'm going to decorate this beautiful tear stand that we've had for many years. Wise, I'm going to use Easter tea from Fortnum and Mason, the perfect addition, and it smells so nice. Oh, so I, I can't even describe it, but it smells absolutely wonderful. So it contains black tea, cornflower petals, marigold petals, uh, orange blossom. So good. And I'm also going to use rose lemonade that we usually have in summertime. It's very cool and lovely. And this is my take on the Bridgerton inspired Easter table. I, I really love it. It just makes me smile and happy. And I hope you love it. And my Lord just joined me for tea so we can indulge in some of the cakes. What do you think? It looks amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Do you think this is what a table would look like in Bridgerton? Very much it would. <laughs> I had so much fun putting this together and I hope you found some inspiration for Easter. Let us know what you think and... As always, we'll see you again very soon. So take care. Take care. Until next time. Bye. Bye-bye.